In the previous video, I introduced the official announcement of China's mega dam construction project. Today, I'm going to break down how this massive hydropower system actually works. Step by step, from the precision of water control to the incredible engineering behind the tunnels and underground power stations. This is not just a dam. It's a technological marvel shaping the future of energy in Asia. The Yarlung Sangpo River in Tibet, one of the most powerful and dramatic river systems in the world, is now at the heart of China's most ambitious hydropower project. Designed to harness the natural drop of over two, 350 meters created by the river's U-shaped bend, this massive undertaking features a five-tiered cascade of dams, tunnels, and underground power stations. While each component plays a critical role, the true engineering brilliance lies in the integration and function of the middle and lower segments, especially the Pajian Low Dam, the Ultra, long diversion tunnel, the Motuo underground powerhouse cluster, and the terminal regulation station. Let's explore how this groundbreaking system works. 1. The Pajian Low Dam, the control valve of the river, located downstream of the main Millen Dam. The Pajian Low Dam serves a unique and crucial function in the system. Unlike conventional dams built primarily for power generation or storage, the Pajian structure operates more like a hydraulic gatekeeper. Its job is to stabilize the river's flow before it enters the massive diversion system. Think of it as the river's throttle. It adjusts, monitors, and, and controls the volume of water entering the long underground tunnel, ensuring consistent flow and safety under varying weather and seasonal conditions. This dam is lower in height and doesn't hold a large reservoir, which reduces environmental footprint while still enabling precise hydraulic management. It ensures that the head pressure and flow velocity entering the tunnel remain optimal, reducing erosion risks and enhancing turbine efficiency downstream. Two, the ultra long diversion tunnel, engineering through the mountains, the core technological marvel of this project is the approximately 40 kilometer long diversion tunnel. The tunnel bypasses the sharp U, turn of the Yarlung Sangpo, where the river naturally plummets, creating a massive potential energy drop of around 2,000 meters, one of the largest in the world for a hydropower project. Carved through some of the most geologically complex terrain on Earth, this tunnel faces extreme challenges. 72 fault zones must be crossed, demanding precise geological surveys and real-time adjustments in excavation techniques. High geothermal activity, deep pressure zones, and earthquake risks require reinforced lining, specialized boring machines, and safety redundancies. The tunnel redirects the water underground, carrying it in a nearly straight line to the Motua region where the drop in elevation is maximized for energy generation. By taking this shortcut, China avoids building multiple traditional dams in the fragile, hard-to-access gorge, reducing both cost and ecological disruption. 3. Machuo Underground Hydropower Station Cluster Powerhouse beneath the earth, at the heart of the project, is the Machuo Underground Powerhouse Cluster. A vast, high-capacity energy generation center located deep beneath the surface. This is where the diverted water is unleashed onto turbines to produce electricity. Expected to exceed 50 dozer GUS, 50,000 MU in total installed capacity. To put that in perspective, it's about three times the capacity of the world's current largest dam, a Three Gorges Dam. Key features of this underground complex include multi-unit turbines operating under ultra high head pressure over 2,000 meters, requiring specialized high strength materials and control systems. Fully underground construction, which minimizes surface disruption to Tibet's delicate alpine ecosystems, increases security and structural resilience in case of natural disasters. 
advanced cooling and ventilation systems to counteract the high geothermal heat because the energy is generated at such extreme depths and pressures. Energy conversion efficiency is expected to reach 85% or higher, a substantial improvement over traditional dams, which typically average 60-70% for. The terminal regulation station, fine-tuning the river, the final piece of the engineering puzzle is the terminal regulation station, which has not yet been publicly named. Its primary purpose is to release the used water back into the natural river channel in a controlled, ecologically responsible way. Here's why it matters flow regulation. Even after energy extraction, the water released must maintain enough volume and regularity to sustain downstream ecosystems in India and Bangladesh. Sediment management, preventing excessive siltation or erosion in the downstream channels is vital for agricultural regions. Flood control during periods of heavy rainfall or glacial melt. This station can modulate flow to avoid downstream flooding, ironically acting as a protective buffer for neighboring nations. This station essentially smooths the handoff from China's engineered system back to nature, balancing human needs with environmental stewardship. Conclusion, a leap forward in hydropower and geo-engineering China's Yarling Sangpo Mega Dam is not just about electricity. It's about transforming how large-scale energy projects interact with nature. By focusing on underground development, smart flow control, and deep tunnel technology, the project aims to maximize energy output with minimal surface disruption, avoid militarized water politics by preserving ecological balance. Create a global model for high head cascade hydropower in mountainous terrain. It remains a topic of international scrutiny. Given the downstream implications for India and Bangladesh. However, from an engineering standpoint, it may well become one of the most significant infrastructure achievements of the 21st century.